that question, though, is it is it a still life? Is it a landscape? Is it a botanical? I think it's a very important organizational principle for your work. And I have put everything possible up here. Um, and here is botanical book to just try to point out some of the things that happen. And in and the, th and the setups that you have today are somewhat simulating, you know, boom, there you are in the botanical gardens, or there you are in a garden or whatever. And what do you do with it? Do you do a concentrated uh, single uh, plant or flower? Um, do you expand that and, and simulate a surround, a, uh, an environment, a, a window, or whatever. Um, do you use a box of color and um, be applied in many, many ways and get something like this? And what is the tipping point of that? And here's another good example. Um, sort of going from, this is a wonderful Chinese piece. Um, go away from the flower, the peony itself. Um, almost nothing else is there except a little atmosphere of, of uh, the surround and the leaves. And then these wonderful shadows. Take a close look at that. That's a beautiful piece. Um, this is um, John Henry Hill. Um, and, and there is one step further with kind of a made up. I mean, I may have actually had this calla lily with a little uh, wall and some other leaves, but he or you can do this in the sense of making up and as you just carry um, from one thing to another. Uh, so I did three, four um, sort of beginnings of that. Um, Starting with the primrose, and then I had the eucalyptus here. And as if you read, which I hope you will, doesn't mean you have to paint this way, but this is the way I did it. Where kind of starting with the center and just working out from the center, adding the leaves, moving, finding the next thing, and then working inside and outside, the, the, in the blossom itself, in the leaves that support it, watching the drying, you know, so you get an edge where you want it, or a leaf where you don't. Um, so here is a, another example of sort of just concentrating on uh, a couple of things. That was from last week. And then this is what I did to kind of illustrate what is in your handout that I know you will read. Um, these are two different pieces. I started with one kind of like the uh, to call it a persimmon, but it's not a persimmon, it's a primrose. Um, I, but here I started with the, prim, the primrose and just worked out here. I, I started with a rose, because I then had a rose, and you'll find that. And again, I just worked out from it, adding some leaves, and um, keep going, keep going. Then I added a little sky, and then I added a little cathedral. Um, and so, so that's an invented landscape. It's an invented landscape. It's nothing you have to do. And I felt called to do the cathedral at the end. Um, that's very it could be an illustration like, for a uh, very Renaissance like. Yeah, for a, a, a Robin Hood novel. <laughs> right. It is Guinevere is in that castle. It is very far from the way I work in general. But I have to say, I had a ball. Um, just and and the concept is what I'm trying to really get at. Is starting with a core and making it sort of spread and throw itself out to suggest, I mean, without that, that it would have been fine too. Um, I went to a concert on Sunday at the Cathedral, and I'm sure that's why I came in. Uh, but, um, you know, the minute you touch a little sky to up there, you are getting a surround, and that might be enough. And you will notice, here's a perfect example. Also, a good example of both what I'm saying, you know, expanding your little finding bits in the, you know, set up for your day, and of inside outside painting. Um, painting around things and in and out, in and out.
if you uh, paint around, these are what are the hollyhocks? Maybe, maybe hollyhocks. Um, you establish maybe these yellowish uh, leaves, and then in around support them, point point them out. And the little bit of that sky, that is enough to create a. Then you're in a landscape. You know, is it a mm -hmm. is it a still life? Is it a, just a floral concentration, like the Chinese piece mm -hmm. or the uh, Martin Kotler, interesting painter. In case you don't know him, um, local. Uh, so that's good monotypes too. Beautiful monotypes. Does he teach? He, he used to. I took monotypes. What at the studio school? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. He, he a master of and mostly oil paint, painter, um, of just dinging that blue sky. Uh, I mean, his, his, some of his paintings are so Washington and they're quite wonderful. Asa Durer? Where's the same? Durer? Durer? No, Durer, I said Durer. Durer. of course. Is the other Durer. Durer. My favorite piece. And then uh, I adore that. This is Lafarge. John Lafarge, and this is, what's her name? Um, the woman, Fidelia Bridges. It's a watercolor. It's about the same period. Oh, yeah, lakes in it. I love and, it. Um, right. And again, um, it could be sort of a botanical study. We just started with, actually, see these leaves? Same method. Same method. Just mm. painting around, mm -hmm. leaving the negative. Um, she could have done just uh, Queen Anne's Lace and called it Queen Anne's Lace and <laughs> given it a label and put mm -hmm. Queen Anne's Lace, you know, proper mm -hmm. stems and proper uh, leafing, but she, uh, and I've seen other works of hers where she does this up very much. It's a little arbitrary. One could have a huge discussion, as I might, might about in another way. Um, the placement of your horizon, you know, if it were here, 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 what happens to how you perceive this. Um, but then she does a very atmospheric sky, which is, you know, it's all very muted. It's in the sort of gun, Oker um, family, except for, I'm, I'm going to assume, but I think it could be body color, as they call it at that time, um, on the whites. Um, more or less my all-time favorite piece, and, which has been damaged, and I love the damage. <laughs> <laughs> and then this. Yeah, the red this is a butterfly. It's a wonderful, it looks like a butterfly. And it's not. It's a something like it, you know. I stuffed it in my bag. And oh, it's not. A no, <laughs> isn't it wonderful? No, he has. I um, uh, can't remember in this. I don't think there are any insects. This is the most eloquent mud, mm -hmm. dirt, and this. Um, many of you have probably seen the piece that was in um, the show about uh, X years ago. Uh, it's a, not. It wasn't this one. It was the. Well, maybe that one was three there. years ago. Four? Three years ago. Only three. Um, uh, about that big. And this is quite accurate, but it did have an atmospheric sky feeling to it. It's on vellum. And it just, it, again, the power of so little. This I brought, um, actually, and I did mix it in partly, really for that reason, uh, because I thought it would catch your eye. And probably things would go run through your head, including Mirandi. Um, I mean, I know you don't think it's Mirandi, but you know, there, there's nothing new under the sun, and it's very much building up with Mirandi. It's very Mirandi. Yeah. Very Mirandi. It's a painter called, uh, named Perry Schwartz, and it's from an exhibit down in Richmond that just opened. I think it's. Uh, I think the, she's a woman. I've seen other work of hers. I don't know if there's anything on the other side. Yeah, there might be. Um, but it's this kind of. Uh, Kind of, I assume, scraped, you know, big with cardboard, whatever. It is. I think it's an oil. Um, wonderful, uh, you know, perception, a studio piece of looking out the window or whatever. The grays are really nice. The grays. Yeah. Thank you, Maureen. <laughs> Bring the grays up. Um, along with everything else um, that I, my mind was spinning around with. Um, I did a lot of play with grays, as I know some of you may have. Um, and the, my biggest takeaway uh, was um, how important in, the, in doing them, and I had a great deal of fun, including trying to duplicate 
um, <laughs> uh, paint shift. And then That's I funny. forgot to go. I was going to go get a whole bunch of them just so that everyone could <laughs> have a fun little exercise. Uh, oh, but I got them at home. You oh. probably do, and I have other oh. colors here. But I was just going to do the gray <laughs> as a gray defender. Um, and <laughs> it's, a, it's quite an interesting exercise. You mm. might set yourself. Uh, to, it's mm. something that I learned a lot from. Um, you know, trying to nail it, because, and if I had the other gr uh, grays that I didn't get, um, you just, you, as you well are aware, they, they're, you know, the grays are bend one way or the other, and if you put it in a house and you put at a very white molding or whatever, um, suddenly you'd say, oh my god, that's green, hmm. or that's purple, right. mm -hmm. or it's, it's, um, uh, hmm. Blue, yeah. Baby blue. And so it is a fun, fun, seriously fun exercise. And the thing that my takeaway one was, I love grays. Two, the most important thing to me when, I, when you get it is that there's some informing touch in in your mix. And I tried mixing on the paper, mixing on the palette. I did everything. I goes on paper on um, palette. These are. Um, Oh, um, those were all mixing on the paper. Yeah. I think I didn't do any. But I have before made a big argument, it's so much better to make, mix it on the paper. I did it yes. some, yeah. and some that mixed on the palette and then were fine. Mm -hmm. the, there are slight differences whether you wet your little yeah. square first and then put it on, but it's something to play with. And my, my what I did more than ever, and I realized that's really how I do paint, was coming back. I came back in almost all of them, not with major things, usually with water and just shot. This says re-wet here. Uh, it was cobalt, turquoise, and cadmium orange. Mm -hmm. And then I just put some water in back into it. So some, some of you may never do work in this way, but think, think about it. And you know, if it's something that does work for you, if it isn't, don't even worry about it. But um, that informing color, a little touch, and how eloquent that can be. Say, say you're doing a sky. I mean, blue sky is not the only sky. In fact, it's rare, mm -hmm. as we know. From, <laughs> right. from who said, why is every Tuesday? Uh, yeah. 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 Um, so uh, that's more or less the thing. This is a, botan a botanical approach, with, um, which is, I talked about last week, the uh, wonderful exhibit. Um, a compendium of things. I mean, you're looking at a compendium of things, but I didn't put any insects, owls, <laughs> snakes, anything into that, but you can. Um, so uh, keep that in mind. Do take a look at the handout. and. I will say this more for the next two or three classes, probably two. This, the concept of up close and approaching, getting into a landscape through a, a up close thing um, is a very, very powerful.